Hey, let us talk about mythology again. This time about fairies. When we hear the word fairy, we probably think of Tinkerbell or Fairy Godmother, right? Well, blame Disney for that. Sure, they technically count as fairies, but those sugary sweet depictions aren't the whole picture. So, what are fairies really? Well, before we are getting into this, as always, please like this video and subscribe if not done so already. Now, with that being said, let's get right into it. Well, the term fairy or fae, fae folk, has been used across different European cultures to describe supernatural beings. But here's the thing: calling something a fairy is super broad. It can include almost any mythical creature, from elves to goblins to dwarves and so on. Fairy tales aren't just about sparkly wings and magic wands. They are filled with dragons, tricksters, and even some pretty sinister beings. So, let's dive into what fairies really are and explore the darker side of these magical creatures. Beginning with the classification, in Scotland, fairies are split into two main groups: the silly called and the unsilly called. If you are thinking good fairies versus bad fairies, you are not wrong. The silly called fairies are the beautiful, helpful ones. So they enjoy doing favors for humans and giving blessings. But don't offend them. They will fix the situation if it's an honest mistake. But still, and they are mostly associated with spring and summer, and of course, preferring the daylight. On the flip side, the unsilly called are the stuff of nightmares, hideous and dangerous. They roam during autumn and winter, loving the darkness. And these guys are all about mischief, stealing kids. Dabbling in a dark magic and harming humans just for fun.、And、these fairies can't reproduce, so they often kidnap human children.、And、fairies can also be categorized as trooping, it is, social fairies with their own laws, solitary, which would be tricksters or loners, or domesticated, it is. Household spirits who help with cause in exchange for hoots. Now, the changeling myth. One of the darker fairy myths is the changeling. In European folklore, fairies would steal human babies, leaving behind a changeling, a fairy child, or deformed offspring. These changelings looked human, but something. Was always off. Maybe it was the large eyes or sharp teeth. The changeling story often has sad undertones, with the creatures being referred to as oaths because they were unwanted, deformed, hairy children. Fairies took children for various reasons. Some were raised as servants, others out of revenge against the parents. And some were simply loved as replacements. If a changeling was discovered, parents would try to force the fairies to return their child by making the changeling laugh, or even through less pleasant methods, like, well, torture. This legend has deep ties to real-world child abuse and abandonment. Especially during times when survival was hard enough, and every family member had to contribute to the household. Now, to the leprechauns. Those are probably the most recognizable type of fairy, and they've been mischievous from day one. Forget the green outfits, though. That's a twenty-century thing. Additionally, they wore red. They are small. About three feet tall, so round about one meter. 
unusually dressed in red jackets and knee-length breeches. They avoid friendships, preferring to spend their time making shoes. If you catch one, legend says, he has to show you where his gold is hidden. But don't get too excited. Leprechauns are master tricksters. One story tells of a farmer who called a leprechaun and was promised a pot of gold. The leprechaun marked the spot with a stick in his hat, telling the farmer to return with a spade. But when the farmer came back, the entire field was filled with sticks and hats. Out with it! Now, brownies and boogers. Brownies are those helpful house fairies that come out at night to clean up and do chores. They only ask for a little food and drink in return, especially cake and cream. But they are very easy to upset, move a broom, or change their surroundings, and you will quickly find yourself without a brownie. If they get really mad, brownie can turn into boogers. They are much nastier counterparts. Boogers are all about chaos. They steal, move things around, mess with pets, and even jump into your bed to pull on your ears. They can be driven off by leaving salt outside your door or hanging a horse hoe on your front door handle. Up next, pixies. Pixies, especially from Devon and Cornwall, are another type of fairy. They are small, childlike, and love playing tricks. Unlike leprechauns, though, they often gather in large groups to sing, dance, and prank humans. But they're usually harmless, and are even known to play with children or give blessings. Some legends say pixies are the souls. Unbaptized children lingering in a state of innocence. Now, the banshees. The banshees, originating from Irish folklore, is a fairy known for her wailing cry, which foretells a death in a family. Banshees can appear as either young women or old hags, with eyes red from crying. They wail a sad signal that a family member has died or is about to. Unlike some other fairies, banshees aren't evil, but they are deeply tied to grief and loss. Sometimes they linger, watching over the family of someone who died too soon. And lastly, pagan deities and fallen angels. Some believe fairies were once pagan deities. Who lost their power as their followers disappeared. Others think fairies might be fallen angels, those who were cast out of heaven but didn't fall all the way to hell. And these fairies occupy a strange space between light and dark. Not quite angels, but not demons either. Over time, the church grew to associate fairies with, you guessed it. Evil, viewing them as demonic. In some traditions, fairies are also believed to be the souls of the dead, especially in Scotland and Ireland. Well, that's it for today's dive into fairy folklore. If you have got any favorite fairy stories from books, movies, or TV shows, let me know in the comments. Venture with me into the shadowy realms of mythology. Where hidden connections and forbidden knowledge await, together we will uncover the dark secrets that lie beneath the surface of these ancient tales, revealing that there is much more to mythology than mere stories. And there are profound truths waiting to be discovered. Join me on this journey and let's explore the mysteries together.